but um, this is our group where, and I, I gave you a little bit of feedback on like what, 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 what it is. So pretty much I hate to scare people off in groups like diamond where someone maybe just became diamond and they're like, just really happy that they just got diamond. You know, it's like, that's what I got. Um, and, and there's some that don't care to be elite or premier and that's okay too, you know? And so I just want to, I wanted to push people who wanted to be pushed, but I didn't want to push away people who didn't. <laughs> so just made a very open post and said, Hey, you know, I have these specific goals. Do you have anything like premier five star, two star, even uh, elite, whatever it might be. Um, because if so, I'd love to stick us in a smaller place where we can be very like open and blunt and honest with like, here's our points and here's what we're doing and here's where we need and where we're going and all that. So there's like 25 of us in this group. Um, obviously some people are working full time during the day. So there's a lot of people that can't pop on. Um, but again, we do have big goals, whether it's you know, two star, five star, elite, premier, whatever. Um, so everybody in here kind of gets that. So you can say what you need to say. Uh, and just introduce yourself too, for those that don't know, know Craig and just how awesome you are. I would love for you to just share like what you do with each body. Oh, I could go, I could go on and on about how awesome I am. I <laughs> awesome. All right. You want, you want me to go? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for that introduction and thank you for letting me be on this cool call today. I love being involved in or part of, of groups that, uh, that want to achieve great things that aren't afraid of, you know, getting outside of their comfort zone and, and, you know, pushing for milestones. I, I, I hear what you're saying, Nikki, like there's oftentimes I'll get on a team call and not understand like exactly where the audience is at. Then I'm like, Oh, am I talking to high level? Am I not talking directly enough? So then there were people on the call that were like, I thought I was getting, you know, some like, you know, some hardcore stuff here. And that was, that was pretty vanilla. So I'm glad to hear that everyone on this call is like has self selected themselves uh, into an area to be pushed that that's awesome. I, I uh, just on behalf of, of everyone at Beachbody's corporate offices, which I, I'm a part of our, our, uh, our corporate team. I'm actually based in Provo, Utah. Most, you know, the HQ is in Santa Monica, but we have a coach development team or a sales team um, office here in Provo, Utah. I report to Jeff Hill, who reports to Carl Deichler, and I am part of a team uh, whose job it is to work with our coaches and help coaches grow and perpetuate uh, the Beachbody business in, uh, it, throughout North America. We've got a Canada team. We've got kind of a West and Central region team. Um, and then we have an, an East uh, region team where we kind of split into Northeast and Southeast. And uh, I have an opportunity to direct uh, our Eastern regions, Northeast, Southeast, and then work with the coaches that are ranked nine to 15 star diamond in the region. And then my team also helps, uh, you know, mentor and, and work with the coaches anywhere from, uh, I've got a manager, Keyshawn Graves and Jeff Mathewson, who work with our three to eight star diamonds, as well as uh, Mary Day, who kind of works with our diamond coaches to two star diamond coaches. So we're here for you. We're here to support you. We're help, here to help, you know, strategize and, and really help perpetuate the mission of Beachbody, uh, you know, which is to help people achieve their goals and enjoy healthy, fulfilling lives. And it's something that we love to do. We take the mission of Beachbody uh, seriously, and and we take a lot of pride in seeing coaches uh, achieve great things. You guys are the heartbeat of this company. Uh, we thank you for everything that you do to you know to perpetuate this mission and to move it forward. I fully recognize that I don't make one direct sale of Shakeology. I haven't sold one challenge pack. Uh, not allowed to. It's against you know, policies and procedures. Um, I get to work with those of you who do do that. Um, but I, I just want you to know how much we on the corporate side recognize the hard work that you put into this business. And, uh, you know, you work in your fringe hours, you work from your full-time jobs, you work from your full-time jobs as moms or, you know, whatever it is that, you know, that you're doing, we recognize that you put yourselves out there. 
Uh, times you subject yourselves to, you know, weird looks from your friends or family or spouse or all of the above, uh, you know, that, that you're, you're courageous in moving this, this mission forward. And uh, we're, we're happy and proud to be associated with you. So thanks so much. And I, I thank you as well for being willing to, uh, to get in and, and to push for great things. Um, I, I, maybe I just will start with a, a quick story and then I'll jump into some of the nitty gritties on, on achieving some milestones before the end of the year. But um, for the, for those who may, I know that like, you know, Carly knows this, Nikki knows this. I don't know if maybe some of you are, are have heard me talk before, but I am a, a cyclist. You know, I don't know if things on my wall here, I hang my cycling medals and I've got some, you know, different trophies and things back there from, uh, from riding in these bike races. And I got into bike racing, God, it's been 10 years ago now, and essentially got in because I really like sports, but there wasn't room for me anymore on an NBA roster as, you know, a, a middle-aged, you know, man. In fact, I was never good enough to be paid any money to play sports. So I had to find something to kind of drive me. I got into triathlon and figured out that I hated running and swimming. So I'm like, oh, I'll stick with the bike. Uh, so I got into cycling and road bikes a lot, uh, just road bikes. Uh, but being here, uh, living in Utah, we live in, uh, in the Rocky Mountains. In fact, I thought I'd just like turn my screen here. Like, I don't know if you can see the, oh, the mountains are like filled with smoke. But anyway, there's mountains up there, you guys, and they are fun to, uh, to play in. And I had a friend who invited me to go mountain biking. And I'm like, okay, well, I should probably be able to do this all right. You know, I'm a, I'm a road cyclist and I ride, you know, two, 3,000 miles a year. Like, I'll really get on, get on and, uh, and, and show him that I can ride a bike. So I got myself a mountain bike and we went up uh, into uh, the mountains. And I quickly learned that I uh, sucked at mountain biking. You see, on a mountain bike, uh, it's not just a smooth road. You can't just point your tire and, you know, look out ahead and, and try to, you know, not get hit by a car. You actually have to steer the bike and follow a skinny little trail. And many times there are things in the trail that, that you run into. And I found that I was really good at running into every rock on the trail. I, I could pedal. I mean, I, there was no problem with the pedaling part. I, ha I had good, you know, strong legs and, and, and endurance, but I could not steer the bike. Uh, if, if I were going and I would see a rock in the trail, I was certain to hit that rock. I would, you know, be like, hey, there's a rock, there's a rock, don't hit it, boom, I would hit the rock. And it got really frustrating because I just, I couldn't get it. I was always like, you know, hitting the rocks and falling over and tipping over. And I just thought, you know, I'm, I just, I'm not very good at this. The, the technical side of it is just something I can't pick up. I probably ought to just stick with, with you know, road biking. Um, well, I was out on, um, on a road ride with a group of, of friends of mine. And I was talking to a guy who I knew did both, you know, road cycling and mountain biking. And I was telling him like, uh, Jason, I've been out, you know, mountain biking a couple times and it, it's cool. I love being like out in the trees and nature, but I stink. Like I, I am just not very good at it. He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, if there is a rock in the trail, I hit it. There can be a rock there. And as much as I try not to hit, it, I'm always, you know, running into, you know, to, to these rocks in the trail. And he's like, well, let, let me give you some advice. He said, stop staring at the rocks. And I was like, huh? He's like, you're looking at the rocks. Stop staring at the rocks in the trail and because you'll go where your eyes go. But if you focus on where you want to go, all right, on the path that you want to take, and that's where your focus goes, that is where you'll go. And I was like, you know, could have had a V8, right? I was like, that is let me give that a try. And, and it was amazing. You guys, I mean, it was like night and day difference from the moment I went out and went on a ride. I still had, you know, I could pedal, I had the endurance. And when I started focusing my eyes on where on the trail, on the clear part of the trail on where I wanted to go and wanted to get to, that's where my bike went. All right. It, and, and I started missing the rocks. I would actually go where it, where it was clear. And it was such um, an epiphany for me or an axiom for life, if you will, um, about what happens to, to all of us as we go along. Sometimes we get so focused, right, staring at the rocks that 
we, we run into them. Oh, there's a rock in the trail. Don't hit it. Don't hit it. Oh, I'm in there. And, and it, it was, it was one of those things where I, I recognized that it wasn't just about mountain biking. It was like, well, what rocks are in my trail in life that, that I'm focused on and how can I stop focusing on those things and just focus on, you know, the trail ahead? Because if I put my focus there, that's where I'll go. And so as I kind of be, begin this discussion, I want you guys, um, to, you know, if you haven't already, kind of think about, you know, your business and certainly your, your business or your life that, you know, there's going to be rocks in the trail, there's going to be obstacles. And, um, and let me just say that just because I, I now know not to stare at the rocks, it doesn't mean that every now and then it, you know, it's not unavoidable. I, I still will, will run into a rock every now and then, uh, both in mountain biking and in life, but I have found that if you will focus, you know, your sights, put your focus on where you want to go, that that path is, is, is more clear. And I know that each of you have some lofty goals in your beach body business and and I want you to hit them. We want you uh, to hit them. And, and so my 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 first you know you know recommendation through all of it is is don't stare at the rocks. Keep your focus on the things that on the path uh, ahead. And as you focus on that part, guess what? That's where you will take, you know, your life and, and your business. Okay. Um, so with that in mind, let, let me dive in a little bit, or let me just ask this, I guess, first, if, if um, it's okay, Nikki, are there like, I'm going to go into elite and premier and NLC and just some of the nitty gritty on that in terms of numbers. So, you know, exactly, you know, where you need to be exactly where you need to be training. Is that where we want to go? Or are there any maybe questions about, Hey, I was really hoping that while I have corporate on that you answered me this, I don't want to speak and then have everyone be like, well, like that was lame. Does anybody have like specific questions related to like where you're at and where you think you should be focusing or do you want him to just speak on? Just so I can I can dive into it and then if something comes up put it in the chat but I just if you don't if there was something outside of elite and premier um, you know NLC and kind of breaking down those numbers let me let me know if I can address that as well okay That's yeah, whatever, so kind of like me like NLC and then move on uh, let me I'll go to NLC last how does that sound okay All right. I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna start with the big stuff and then we'll work we'll work down to to uh, NLC because I hope that everyone here is still looking ahead and being like I want to ride my bike to elite right mm -hmm. here's the path let's go let's get on this baby and, and pedal right so elite and premier I made these really handy dandy fancy uh, uh, tools for this training and I wrote it on a white sheet of paper okay so elite and premier all right we have to add, there are points required, you know, to get to this, this program. All right. And at, by the end of the year, you have to get 105 elite points, right? Same with premier. It's the same point requirements for elite or premier. You need to have 105 of these elite slash premier points in order to achieve elite or premier coach. Okay. Now, Speaking of elite specifically, these points are broken down into these three categories, right? APV, your personally sponsored SC coaches, right? This is a pool of your 2017 and 18 coaches who are achieving uh, SC each month and when that happens. And you are also Success Club qualified. You get two points every time that happens. And then this category is um, your new coaches that have enrolled and that they earn at least one SC point during either the month they enroll or the next month. If they produce any success club point at all, then you get a point in, in this category, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be exactly this point breakdown, 50-55, but I'm just gonna speak to it as if it is, and then if you've produced a lot more points in this category, then great, you can maybe have a few less in the APB or the PSSC, but I'm just going to speak as if, um, you're doing this. Does this look right in my screen or is this all backwards? Does it look right? Okay. Because when I'm looking at myself, it's all like backwards. Okay. So, um, so you guys, because I'm going to assume that we're wrapped, like now it, it's 27th of August, which is pretty incredible. Um, the year is flying. So I'm going to speak as if 
eight months of the year are kind of done, right? So how many more months do we have left then to achieve these points? Right, four, good, all right. Um, so that's why I say if, if your target in points is 50 for each of these categories, then through the end of August, right? Now you still have some days left of August to you know kick some butt and get some points in, but you really need to be trending um, if, in, in, if you were just on pace, perfectly on pace, through the end of August, you would have 33 points in the APV category, 33 points in the PSSC category, and maybe two to three points in this uh, new coaches with one or more SC points uh, in that category, all right? Does this all make sense to you, or are we at least at that, that level? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I, I know I need to get there. I also want to stop you there really quickly because I think that can be scary for some people <laughs> because okay. I know people who have like, like last year at this time had, I don't know, 40 points and busted butt and made it happen. So while it is hard to do with less points, like the trending area is great because you're just like on track to do it. Yeah. This, this would be like, Hey, no change. You're not speeding up. You don't have to push. And but Nick, Nikki is absolutely right. I know I have a lot of coaches I'm working with right now that I know are going to hit elite that that um, don't have exactly this perfect amount of points in each category. In fact, I have a lot of coaches because they like maybe kick butt in to be mindset that have maxed out at 50 points maybe in this category and are maybe at 18 points or 20 points in the SC category and are you know will still achieve elite. All right. So this was just to give you kind of a measurement that, Hey, if you were just pacing perfectly to hit all of these amounts, this is where you need, you know, to be, but it also hopefully gives you a little bit of scope to know, Oh, Hey, I'm actually ahead of schedule in this category. So I need to focus on, you know, PSSC, or I need to focus on my new coaches getting, you know, success club, you know, in, in the first, you know, 60 days. Um, or you might be heavy in one category. All right. Or it may be that, hey, all three categories, you know, need my attention. And you can see now to what you know, extent you might need to push it there. But I definitely agree wholeheartedly with uh, Nikki that that even if you're trending a little bit below that, it doesn't mean that you can't make up, uh, you know, some some time on there. So so definitely um, something that that is achievable. All right. The best way to do this is to focus on the uh, personally sponsored SC category. And here's why, there's a, there's a few reasons why, and, and, and I'm gonna let you know, okay? The, if you were to take and really focus on, especially like your 2018 coaches, if you were to really focus on, on getting them achieving success club, it does a couple of things for you. Number one is it obviously gives you points in the PSSC category. But if they're enrolled in 2018, it's also anytime you're getting them in the success club, it's also producing more volume for the acquisition PV category. So you're really creating points um, with the same volume in both categories. Does that make sense? All right. So if you were just to really focus on, you know what, I'm going to look at my, you know, at, at my pool of 2017, 2018 coaches and help get them to SC because it helps produce numbers in there. Anyone you have that's enrolled in 2018 will also help you produce APV. All right. That is one of the, the so you, again, you're, you're kind of double dipping with the same volume. It's hitting both categories. The other reason that, uh, that I would say focus um, a lot on this category is because it's the only category where you can get double, you get like bonus points, right? If you're SC and then, you know, I enrolled, you know, Lynn and Lynn, you know, hit SC, then she gets a point. And then because I'm SC qualified, I get another point. So you're getting two points, you know, in that category. All right. So this might be a little bit, um, tougher to read, but let me, let me break it down here. Right. So here's, here's what I do with my coaches when I reverse engineer where they need to be in the, in the SC category. Okay. Here I've got my, my really sophisticated, um, you know, tools here for this. So this is what I do to look at success club breakdown, right? You've got, if the max you can get in this category is 50 points, then look at your current points, right? And then, um, or subtract from 50 
the current points that you have and that will give you your points needed. That's pretty obvious, right? Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the points needed and you're just gonna divide those by two, right? Why do we do that? Because you're getting double the points because you're SC as well. So I just say, okay, divide that by two because you get double points there, all right? That will give you the number that you then need to divide by the number of months left in the year, which I'm gonna call four, okay? Because it's we're in August, so September, October, November, December are the months you have left, all right? Doing that will then uh, give you exactly how many coaches that you will need to hit SC each month in order to get to 50 points in this category. Does that make sense? Okay. So take 50 minus your current points and just divide them right in half because half of the points you get because you're SC qualified. And then if you divide that by four more months, you'll know, okay, I need X number of coaches to hit success club on a monthly basis for me to get to 50 points in this category. So here's an example. Let's say that currently you're sitting at 26 points in the SC category. I would subtract 26 from 50, giving me 24, right? And then I immediately just divide that by two because half are my bonus points, which leaves me with 12. I need to have at least 12 occurrences of a 2017 or 18 coach hitting success club between now and the end of the year. So if I divide that by four, because there's four months left, it means I need at least three coaches each month hitting success club, all right? Now it's not a requirement that all three happen this month. If you only do two this month, that's fine. It just means that, hey, next month that you're gonna need four. Ultimately, you would just need at least, again, for it to happen 12 times between now and the end of the year. So. Um, however you want to spread that out. I like spreading it out evenly, but ultimately you guys, it doesn't matter if you did it three each month or if you did zero this month, zero next month, and then six in November and six in December, it doesn't matter. That's how many you would need to finish the year at 50 points in that category. And then by virtue of doing that, you're going to be throwing PV into that APV category as well. That one's a little bit harder to reverse engineer um, because depending on you know, how much, uh, you know, PV you're producing, you know, each month um, is a little bit trickier to, to divide by, by people, but you can always um, reverse engineer that one as well and say, okay, how much PV am I averaging each month? And if I were to continue that trend, how many more points, you know, would I produce in theirs? So, um, but, but again, for the purpose of trying to like kick it in the butt for these last four months. If you focus on the SC category, then I promise you, you'll max out any effort that you could possibly make in the, in the APV category. Okay. And, and, and so let me just be really clear then just to finalize here in this last category. I haven't said a lot about it because it's pretty straightforward. And at the end of the day, I feel like if you needed to produce all five points in one month, you could figure out how to do that. But in that new new coaches with SC, again, it's just someone that if they were to enroll in August, they have all of August and then they have all of September, not to hit SC, right? Just to get at least one SC point, meaning they sold you know, anything on HD essentially that was 90 PV or more. So if they sold one challenge back, boom, you get a point there. If they sell, just start one person on Shakeology, um, there's a point there. They just need any success club point. They don't need to hit SC themselves. Is that difference clear on that? Yes. Okay. Um, and again, if you max out these other two categories and only need five points in that category, um, then it's easy to do. If you've produced more than five points in this category, then obviously it would lower the amount that you'd maybe need in another category. So if you just kicked butt on getting coaches started and getting them to sell something, and you've got 10 points in that category or 15 points in that category, then it would just lower the, the number that you'd need in one of these other categories. Okay, because ultimately you need 105. All right, it's just that you max out at 50 in this category, you max out at 50 in that category, which means you need at least five points from the new um, coaches that hit SC1. But again, if you're killing this category, then you can just take away the amount that you might need in one of the other two. 
All right. Hopefully I haven't overspoken that so much that now you're like, I don't even know what he's saying now. If I have, let me know, DM me and we can get it cleared up. Okay. All right. So that's the point part of Elite and Premier. All right. Or of Elite. Now on Premier, okay, for Premier Coach, you still need 105. But guess what? There are no maxes in any of the point categories. Meaning that as a premier coach, if you're just kicking butt in APV and you get all 105 points in APV, then you can be a premier coach. There are no caps on, see on elite, we force you to produce in each category. With premier, you can get all of your points in any of the categories, okay? So any of those three categories, um, it, as long as you got 105 points, that would all that matter. You could get 100 points in APV and five points in the SC category, and that would get you to Premier, okay, in terms of the points. Is that clear? Okay, just no caps on Premier. All right, now um, you guys are saying, hey, that's great, Craig, on the points. I'm working towards that, um, but what is, is, you know, I'm also working towards is hitting five star diamond, right? That is, Again, one of the one of the uh, uh, unique parts about becoming an elite point, elite coach is getting to that to that five star diamond. And I recognize it. Yeah, like Nikki says there, that's the kicker. Uh, yes, yep, uh, I, I'm with you on that. Um, and and that's why we tiered up, you guys. Premier is not a fallback position from elite. Premier is a stepping stone. Um, to elite. So if you're newer in this business and rank advancement is one of those things that you're, you are still developing, but hey, you're in and you're doing the work and you are generating uh, elite points, then good for you. Like, keep it up. That's awesome. Like, let's target, you know, target two star diamond and knock out two star. And then if you're like, you know what, I've knocked that out, I can get the five star, then push for five star. I don't know where you're at or how feasible um you know the rank portion of elite and premier is going to be for you let me just say that it, you know if if five star diamond is achievable by the end of the year then you want to become an elite coach the it will create a foundation for your business that will stand um you know the the, the test of time and and if uh you know if you're on your way to five star again it, you've got to be five star to be elite and you need to produce at least two new diamonds during the year. And so if this is a first time elite thing for you, I'm just going to assume that in the process of hitting five star, you've created at least two new diamonds this year, right? If you began the year at five star, um, you know, you need to produce two new diamonds during the year and maintain that five star title. Um, and, uh, you know, again, depending on where you were, but you have to be a paid as five star and you have to have created two new diamonds during the year. Okay, for Premier, that rank uh, is a, at two star. This is probably review for you guys, but uh, just to, to reiterate, it's get to two star diamond status uh, during this year and have created two new diamonds, right? So if you were two star in 2017 and in 2018, you're still two star diamond, right? That's awesome, you've got the title, but you have to create two new diamonds that either hold for six weeks during the year or at least paid one bonus week as a, a diamond during the month of December. Okay, so uh, that is for Premier. All right, if these points are looking a little bit far off this year and Five Star Diamond is looking a little far off this year, that, that, that's fine. Let's get you, um, again, going in the right direction and finishing the year uh, with momentum. And what we would love to have is for all of you guys to attend our new leader conference um, that happens in uh, February, I believe, of, uh, of, of each year. And new leader conference is an awesome opportunity to go to, it's actually held in Los Angeles near Beachbody's headquarters. In fact, part of new leader conference, you get to go on a tour of the headquarters and see some of the you know, the studios and things that are there, it, it's, and then just get some incredible training. It's my favorite beach body event that we do each year is, is new leader conference. It's something phenomenal. So let me just, um, I'm going to share, um, hold on before I share screen. Let me actually go to, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm on it.
So if you go into your handy dandy um, FAQs, right? This will be just be a review for you, but right, right in the FAQ for new leader conference, uh, you guys, that will take place February 8th through uh, the 10th, all right? The qualifications are the following, all right? Uh, number one, you um, would need to be a lifetime one-star diamond or lower um, to start the year with. So if you'd already hit a uh, two-star diamond or above, then New Leader Conference is not for you. you you're, you know, hopefully you've already been. <laughs> All right. But if you started the year at one-star diamond or diamond or lower, then you can um, uh, qualify for New Leader Conference this year. And the way to do that is to achieve one-star diamond or higher, right? Um, and be there for six consecutive weeks, right? Between January 1st and December 1st of this year. And you had to have earned uh, 10 or more elite points during the year as well. I'm going to go ahead and assume that everyone on this call has, you know, outperformed the 10 elite points that you're all the way there. Um, maybe some of you are fighting for star diamond and I would say absolutely, you know, push it, make sure that, that you lock in that star diamond, that you hold it for six weeks, um, that you have your 10 elite points on the year and you can earn a spot uh, to uh, our new leader conference, right? Um, if you want to take it um, a little bit uh, farther, right? If you earn a minimum of 25 elite points, so you get the star diamond part taken care of, and you have more than 25 elite points on the year, then you also get a free hotel room with that. So I would love for everyone on this call at a minimum, if, if you're still working up towards the elite coach or premier coach uh, level, Let's get you to NLC and, and make that uh, a non-negotiable goal for you this week to get start this year, excuse me, <laughs> get to, uh, to Star Diamond, get those 25 elite points knocked out for the year so that you get a free room to that, okay? Whew, all right. Um, I've said a mouthful and I'm, I'm ready to take any questions that you have. I actually, um, it's okay, Nikki, I've got like a... a 145 kind of hard stop time because I actually have an appointment outside the office. I didn't mention this before, sorry. But hopefully in the next like eight minutes or so, um, I'm happy to take questions in between now and that. Would that be okay? All right. Yep. All right, you guys. Hey, any questions or comments or thoughts that you want to ask me uh, at this time? I, my biggest thing is I think just what's working within other teams as far as like getting those points on the board. Like I was just saying, we're running a 24 hour Emerald group and it's today and then like ending tomorrow, which I think is really helpful. And it's just like a blitz of all things. Um, and we're just trying something new because the longer groups haven't seemed to work that well. So I do feel like getting them on board, like we're definitely talking about the importance of like a spouse placement and how important it is to get that initial sign up. And with that, it really helps with that third category, right? I mean, that's an easy way for a brand new coach to get a points on the board simply by doing that themselves, you know? Um, but just other areas, I guess, I don't know if there's anything that anyone else is doing that's working outside of what we've already, you know, no, I, I, I would say Nikki, you guys are one of the most, you know, proactive and innovative groups and you get team pushes and stuff going I, to me. It's again, keep your eye on the trail of where you want to go. And so if the team are doing these activities with the idea of, you know, getting new coaches on, getting them to hit Emerald, that's going to feed every aspect of your business. Creating new emeralds will create new diamonds, but then it also brings on new volume, which is going to, I mean, really, if you think about it, anything new that you bring on right now, and then if you were to get them to hit Success Club, it's gonna put points on the board for you in APV, it's gonna get points on the board for you in the Success Club category, and if they do it within their first you know, month and the next month, then it's going to put points in the category in the new SC category. So just like uh, Victoria, you know, asked here, she's like, if they, it's Tori, yeah, okay. what's that? Her, she goes by Tori, but it oh, says, it says Victoria's iPhone. Okay, Tori, <laughs> you're like laughing. Victoria is a beautiful name. Okay, <laughs> so Tori, yeah, she brings up a great point. Like if you get someone on board and they hit, uh, you know, Success Club five or greater. Um, but they're within the, the, you know, those first, you know, 60 days, then they'll also, you know, get a point in that category. 
and they're also putting up APB. So I would just say, yeah, any, any initiatives you have that help spur the onboarding of new coaches and the, and the duplication of success club um, in, in those areas are going to drive um, every aspect of this. So just take advantage of them. Take advantage of those. There's no magic lever to be like, well, here's a way to really like boost this or that category without doing any more work. It just doesn't exist. It, it's there, you know, there's no magic levers, no, you know, you know, pixie dust, you know, to sprinkle on this thing. It's just do the basics, but you can certainly, um, what I love about what we have coming up in Beachbody here is, you know, we've got, you know, all these sales going on and upcoming, you know, through September, we've got, you know, the, the shift shop proving grounds coming in October. Um, we've got, uh, some cool new, I don't know that they've even been announced yet, but there's going to be some cool like 80 day extra 80 day obsession workouts that we're going to put out. I don't know if I was supposed to say that. Don't, don't, don't um, share that. I actually like, as I release that from my mouth, I'm like, I don't think anybody knows that yet, but there's going to be coming out. <laughs> you know I mean? Something. All right. There's the some cool. Like I love the idea of the limited edition shake out. Yeah, there's pumpkin that's there. Pumpkin shakeology's coming out. I mean, there's tons of stuff that you can do. Like, give me some peppermint shakeology in Christmas. <laughs> there we go. And then we're gonna give you, you know, December is, you know, is Sean T. December is, you know, Transform 20. So I mean, get, I mean, I don't know what better program, you know, we could put out, you know, to pre-sale in December than a Shanti program. So there, there will be lots of cool things to leverage, you know, as you, uh, as you finish the year here. Okay. Lynn, are you asking about Shaco? Is it September 17th? Uh, yeah. Yep. 17th. Is there going to be a... 12th or 17th, I can't remember which, but... I couldn't either. I've been looking everywhere and I can't find it. I'm trying to organize my next four months because, you know, we're going to be going into the fourth quarter but with um quick question in regards to proving grounds are we going to have a release of workouts prior to the actual launch of the full test group my entire team's wondering they're like in for promotions right now for uh proving grounds like yeah. will there be a group prior to the release no not 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 with this one it, it'll okay. it, it'll go um, because it's already in the library, they're trying to keep it simple. And so it's, it'll start, um, yeah, October 3rd and will be, cool. you know, an October. Cool. You know, Thank you. Yep. I know you need to go, so we will let you go. Um, I, yeah, I apologize. Hold on. But I was at Tori has another question. Uh, speaking of, are there any training numbers for the Sean T's group? Um, yeah, I don't have I don't have the updated numbers from last week. Um, I saw it. I can kind of guesstimate, you know, based on where the trend had been. If you're a, a 2018 enrolled coach, and they're really about the same for diamonds and below category, and then the new coaches enrolled in 2018, both of them you're going to need to be by the end of the month. Um, 25 probably is a minimum and that may not even do it 25 to 30 um 25 new points 25 in the month or to, okay yeah so this is for the sean t promotion to get into the, oh, in the test group oh, no, no no not elite points no 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 i i'll get i'll get for the star diamonds and above i'll get a report today that will give me a greater idea of of where that's trending but if for those that are in the hey new coaches enrolled in 2018, or if you're a diamond um, or below and you're working off of total success club points for the month to get into Sean's group, um, it's going to be in that 25 to 30 range at a minimum. Got it. For close of the month. So cool, cool. All right, you guys. Um, hopefully that was helpful. I felt like I talked a lot and spouted out a lot of numbers and whatnot, but I, I hope it just maybe created some clarity or, or at least so you could say like, okay, hey, here's take inventory of where you're at and put your head down and, and stretch yourself.